is an annual gathering and an event that has been started with an initiative to spread the boundaries of positive impacts of technology and innovations in the remote areas of Himalayas here in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Let's first speak about something which is very important and most commonly misunderstood by the people. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word hack? What is hacking all about? The most common misconception is that many people think hacking is an act of intruding into someone else's computer and accessing or stealing some important data. No, that's cracking. And that's absolutely not what we do here at Hill Hacks. Hacking is about learning and building different individual things, bringing them together and creating something which is very usable in our daily life. In other terms, you can call it as ethical hacking, which is popularly known as DIY culture. So here at Hill Hacks, using technology, electronics, mechanical and artistic creations, we learn and teach some of the interesting concepts and innovations of today's high-tech world. Light is coming like this, it's a concave mirror, so it's like focusing light. So it's, it's going to roughly focus around here. The focus focal point of the, the mirror will be here. And so here will be like a mirror at a 45 degree angle. And we call it like a secondary, like a diagonal or a secondary. And that basically reflects light out, out of this hole. And we fix the eyepieces over here. And we have like adjusters and all. Uh, so I am Manish and I am from Delhi and I am an amateur telescope maker and I built a telescope a few years ago uh, for my own use. We had thought of building a telescope for hill hacks for the children in truckers to enjoy the night sky. So uh, we are basically going with a very well, uh, very widely used uh, Newtonian reflector design. This is the same design that Isaac Newton used 300 years ago and we are building a 6 inch telescope uh, so you would be able to get up to 300x magnification from this. So in order to make this telescope, we first bought a mirror kit which involved the main concave mirror and a small secondary mirror. But the rest of the items which include the tube made out of sheet metal uh, and a mount made out of wood, this is what we are constructing while at the conference. So this involves working with a lot of woodworking tools like saws, jigsaw blades, hammers, nails, glue and also a bit of metal work and a lot of measurement to make sure things are uh, properly aligned. 
So we built the telescope so that it could be carried around, it would be small enough and yet it would be in serious telescope territory. So we would be able to see deep sky objects and also a lot of planets. So in our solar system we would be able to make out Jupiter's cloud belts, Mars's polar ice caps, Saturn's rings uh, and in the deep sky we will be able to make out planetary nebulae, uh, galaxies, star clusters and hundreds of objects which we would never be able to see with the naked eye. When we came here we were really impressed because you know so many people with so many different backgrounds were coming together and uh, they were sharing their ideas, they were sharing their expertise. So there is so much to learn and there is so much to teach and there is so much to discuss and to create new things. The very idea that we can create something from scrap, you know, like they're just cheap plywood or, you know, a few pieces of uh, metal sheets. We can create something which is so expensive, usually out in the market. And we will also be giving an opportunity to people like us and also kids in the local area to witness the sky like they have never witnessed it before. So this project really has an, you know, a great potential and I'm really glad that I got the chance to be a part of it. So the motivation behind building this project was uh, for the kids in the village to be able to appreciate the amazing night sky uh, that is available to them for free every night. And with this instrument, they would be able to appreciate uh, both the beauty of the night sky and also uh, have the scientific method to really understand how the universe functions and just develop curiosity. I'm Freeman. Uh, I'm really interested in the general idea of how we can live in nature but use the internet to stay connected to the global economy, the global culture. I came up here to Hill Hacks last year and we sort of got acquainted with the place and then I'm really excited to run the Code Camp for a full month this year where we you know, explore how to, to learn programming and work on web and mobile applications while living in the Himalayas. And my students are from a variety of backgrounds. Some didn't go to college, some dropped out of college, some graduated and worked um, in a call center or doing support for a little while, but felt like they didn't have any real sort of forward momentum in their careers, and so they wanted to retool, and that's why they came. Uh, so the majority of my students right now are, are, are sort of going on this path and trying to get so that we can do Code for India fellowships. And each of them had, had sort of different goals. Uh, one person wanted to learn PHP, one person wanted to learn C, one person wanted to learn JavaScript. And so for people who are very intent on what they want to learn, I help them sort of pick a, a learning path, uh, find resources on the web that'll help them on their, um, on their path, and then give them support as they need it, as they're sort of struggling and have, have questions along the way. Code for India was set up by uh, a VC in Silicon Valley, Carl Mehta, last year. And the vision behind it was really to try to sort of galvanize the uh, software developers to, to sort of explore building web and mobile applications can, that can really help who are coming online now. I've gotten really excited about it because I, I feel it's really an opportunity for uh, young people who are learning software development to uh, get some practical experience working on real world social problems that really sort of exercise their, their skills as software developers. And so that's sort of what I've been trying to bring together with uh, what I'm doing with Code for India. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I've been here at Hill Hacks attending the Code Camp and I've been here for a week. And uh, I've, I've been learning front-end web development for the past one year. And here at Hill Hacks, I'm working on the project with Code for India where uh, we're making learning applications for children. My contribution for Code for India is developing an app. The app is Learning Express. So in this way, we are developing an app for students who don't go to school. 
so we are teaching them in such a way so that they can like learn their language in local language मैं डोली राजस्थान से आई हूँ और यहाँ पर मैं हिलेप स्कॉट के पटेंट करने के लिए आई हूँ मुझे एंड्रॉयड एप्लीकेशन और नेटवर्किंग दोनों सीखने की काफ़ी इच्छा है नेटवर्किंग क्योंकि मुझे बहुत काफ़ी अच्छा लगता है और एंड्रॉयड एप्लीकेशन मैं अभी सीख रही हूँ मैं अभी कॉट फॉर इंडिया के लिए एंड्रॉयड एप्लीकेशन पर काम कर रही हूँ आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन एंड्रॉयड डेवलपमेंट एंड आई एम विलिंग टू लर्न मोर अबाउट ओपन सोर्स प्लेटफॉर्म Hey, I'm Ashwin. I'm from Bangalore. Uh, I got to know about Hill Hacks through Jaga. Jaga is a community where we all get together and do web development. So uh, basically, I'm a Ruby developer. So this is a good uh, place for me to be because I can get to know new technologies through other people who are here. And uh, yeah, Hill Hacks is helping me a lot. I come from Waldsmer Studios in Dresden, Germany, and we are a collective of media artists. We are running a gallery and we are concentrating on art in public space. So we came to India here for two reasons. We work uh, with the Hillhex and we work here with the Nobolinka Institute and try to help them set up a nice uh, screen printing department so that everybody here is able to make their own screens and print their own designs. Here we try to entitle people to make uh, their own designs and what they basically do out of it um, can have both reasons. So they are free to do whatever they want after, but this uh, technical knowledge, it has to be transferred and that's why we're here for it. Well, the good thing about the screens is that you can erase them every time. You print, have a design uh, done on it first and when you're done, you wash it off and you do the next one. So all this is based on a water um, solutable chemical and this thing can be redone and redone and redone. So all you need is a screen and if you don't spoil it, you can basically use it forever. We're at Hillhack 2015 and for it we've created the perfect amalgamation of our design and technology and organic interactive installation that has been inspired by the spirit of Hillhacks and you, we've used recycled materials from around the space to create it. We started with a workshop where we asked the participants to contribute things that represent hill hacks. Uh, they brought objects like pine cones, milk cartons and LED lights from in and around the venue. Uh, they also made illustrations on the milk cartons and drawings which we used to make a lampshade. We then installed these lights inside and around these objects and got sounds to go along with them. We connected these objects to an electronic touch board which played these sounds when the objects were touched. Through this workshop and resultant installation, we gave the Hillhax community the opportunity to see the merging of creativity and technology and also explore the seamless possibilities that come with it. Hi friends, I'm Nitesh from Bangalore and I'm from technology background with a passion for electronics. For the past few years, I've been working with 3D printing, art and technology. In the last year, in 2014 at Hillhax, I brought a 3D printer which I built on my own and took a workshop for school kids and taught them the basics of 3D printing. And this year, I am presenting what we call as Persistence of Vision Band, which is used for displaying art in the air. So it's just a strip of LEDs controlled electronically. And you press it and move it in the air and you can display messages. Um, 
things I want to do during the, this event is to create a workshop where uh, I teach people how to do geolocation-based applications on sound. So this is a small example I created uh, to show the people the potential of this uh, application. And basically what I'm going to do is establish my origin uh, position here and then it's going to start beeping with a low frequency. As soon as I start moving away from this location, the frequency is going to start, it's, it's going to increase. So I'm going to start the application. Now it's going to beep really loud. I'm, I'm going to establish now the position. Okay, and now I'm going to go away from here. And now I'm going back. and everything is based on GPS. As one of the main objectives to focus on the development of young generations, Hill Hacks has organized many school programs for children to benefit from new methods of teaching and creative learning. Which one's behind you? Yellow. 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 So I'm gonna label these, okay? So green is the U That's face. Dog. What's on what's on top is up, which is so we call it U. At Hillax School Program, I've been helping out with the Rubik's Cube workshop. We will try to teach kids how to solve a Rubik's Cube. It really helps kids with their maths and science skills in thinking about spatial dimensions. Otherwise, I've been also been helping out with the codes and ciphers workshop and storytelling and story writing sessions. Uh, I think these are really important skills that would help a kids uh, learn and uh, have fun at the same time. So the Rubik's Cube is a cube that has six colours and um, what children learn when they solve the Rubik's Cube, even using algorithms that they memorise, is um, one is that they learn to imagine looking at different sides of the cube, which is essentially thinking of dimensions um, intuitively. And the other thing that they learn is pattern recognition because a lot of these algorithms constitute identifying a pattern and then applying a certain you know twisting of different sides and I feel that this sort of environment helps children to figure out how to learn something as opposed to what they're learning as in the focus is on how to learn something as opposed to what they're learning which I think is more important so that way I think open learning is really nice as in you know like the freedom to explore what you want to explore uh, is given to you and that is really Yes, we believe that imagination is the key to innovations and by experimenting through trial and error methods, we get a deeper understanding of things. So we let the younger generations to shape their visions through their notions of hacking and making. Apart from all these activities happening around, we have some people who hold up interesting conferences and discussion panels. This year, some of the widely discussed issues are net neutrality, internet security, global warming, make in India movement and many more.
So the TRAI paper asks, which of ECMO's recommendations should we accept? They're not asking whether they should be accepted or not, they're asking which ones. Right? It's a leading question. Similarly, they're, they're asking, is it too early to regulate and license the internet, internet services in India? Net neutrality is about ensuring that that we are able to, you know, look at audio, video, text, and remix it to reimagine consumer experiences, build startups, build businesses, and if we lose net neutrality in India, it will essentially become the mandate of uh, all the big internet companies. So we got designated spokespersons across the country to go and explain to the startups, uh, startup community, what is going on. We're fighting for that. We've created the Save the Internet campaign for India, both Kiran and I. And uh, we wanted to share our journey and why this is important uh, for us. And also ask people to come and support us because we need every hand on deck. I came to Hill Hacks on behalf of Makers Asylum because this is what we do. We come and try and build stuff, make stuff and encourage the DIY culture. I would like to just tell people, even the layman, to just embrace technology, you know, first we get grasp the basic concepts very clearly uh, understand the technology, play around with the technology at a basic level and then scale up from there. And uh, anyone can do it. It's not, it's not about being a developer, a professional developer. It's about, being, uh, it's about knowing how to structure and process information and enjoying technology, uh, basically. The interesting fact that a lot of stuff that happens in maker spaces is about technology and tools and stuff. But the beauty of this entire setup is you don't have technologists or engineers or people from a technical background here doing so much of the development as people from the arts and the cultural backgrounds because it simplifies the learning curve. It makes it easier to find these interesting ways of doing things and open it up to creative interpretation from these people. Uh, I was actually here to talk about uh, biohacking and bioethics. Uh, whatever we use, then the planet has enough resources to basically cater to the need of every human being and every organism. What we need to do is basically you, you know, give it back to nature once we are done with it. I also did a workshop for data for good and in this we discussed about how data can be used. Uh, most of the data scientists are busy generating lots of data and just uh, making predictions to make ads rather than doing for good stuff. So here we started a conversation on how we can build several data for good applications and projects which can help several non-profits. So we had a very healthy discussion. We had a lot of people participating. Uh, a lot of contrary views also coming up in terms of a lot of people thought it was not in, you know, right to be doing that with nature. A lot of people thought that there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it because as a species, biology is technology basically and all organisms use it to exchange resources. All in all, it was a very, very fruitful discussion. Uh, a lot, uh, the basic idea was to stimulate uh, uh, the thought of being able to hack biology. Uh, what I like about Hill Hacks is uh, the collaboration of many different peoples from many different countries um, that uh, interact with, with each other and, and uh, the tech talks, but also the non-techy stuff. And the whole atmosphere is really great. Um, talking with those people and having a good time and I will definitely come back next year. Hacks. We're up all night making hacks. We're up all night.
eating snacks. Watch out for monkey attacks. We're up all night cause we're hill hacks. We're up all night cause we're hill hacks. We're up all night cause we're hill hacks.